is Michael Kristoff with Kristoff Creative, and I would like to thank everyone for downloading and uh, listening to our first installment of the Olympic Marketing Series. And as the first installment, it made perfect sense to go ahead and start with a discussion about strategy, as it is one of the most important elements a uh, business must nail down before they really get going on anything else. So on the phone with me today is Jay Kurness. He is the co-founder and president of J Street Consulting, a leading, cons leading strategic consulting firm in Washington, D.C. Uh, a little background about Jay. On top of uh, being a longtime friend of myself, and we've worked together for many years, Jay is a veteran marketing and advertising executive. He got his MBA at Harvard University and has over 20 years' experience marketing national brands like General Motors, Keebler, uh, see, MCI, Lockheed Martin, they didn't name a few. Uh, his agency background includes uh, Leo Burnett Advertising, Arnold Communications, and Rainmaker, and currently uh, growing a quite nice business with J Street Consulting out of DC. Thanks for being on the phone with me today, Jay. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. This is a, a great opportunity. Appreciate it. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, matter of fact, uh, we were just talking about this the other day, about this uh, series <coughs> of information articles, podcasts we're going to be releasing called the Olympic Marketing Series, and we start talking about strategy, as we always tend to do. And uh, you yes, have some really great points. And for the life of me, I don't know why it escaped me to not start with strategy. I was actually thinking about something a little bit different, but having you on the phone is a huge uh, coup to everyone to get uh, a little information about where people need to be with their businesses before they even kick anything off, really. Yeah, you know, you know it's not surprising that, that you forgot, because that, that a lot of people do. Um, a lot of people, we like to say, forget to do their homework up front and want to jump right to doing their logo or their brochure or whatever creative deliverable they're looking for. And, um, you know, there's just a few steps involved before we get into doing the, the pretty pictures, as you like to say. Yeah, I, I feel a little silly, though, considering that uh, with all our projects with our clients, you know, we have them go through a questionnaire about kind of nailing down some of the key topics so we have a better idea of, you know, what their strategy is and where they kind of want to go. So that's why I feel kind of silly about the whole thing. And yeah. Well, no, no I mean, every, every, uh, everyone who does a creative project has their own methodology in terms of interviewing the client and making sure that they've, you know, got all the messaging right and got all of the, um, you know, the key strategic points. But, um, you know, there really is a, a, a lot of asking that needs to be done up front. You know, why are you doing this? Why do you... Why do you need a logo? Why do you need a brochure? Um, what are your business objectives? All sorts of stuff that we do in our business before we ever put pen to paper on anything. So, you know, the chance to talk about that for a little bit with you this morning, um, oh, it was great. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I mean, as a matter of fact, I've had uh, clients come back to me and have to delay actually starting on a project because after they read the questionnaire, they're like, oops, I, I think we need to think about this some more. Right. Right. <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, we don't always we don't waste any any time and, and effort uh, going down the wrong path. Well, it's true. I mean, people waste uh, so much time and effort and, and, and money with the um, you know show me another picture you know uh, strategy where people say, well, let's look at this design or let's look at that design, and there's they haven't taken the time to set the litmus test or the you know give them the criteria to evaluate what's right and what's wrong, because there, there is a right answer to what you need to do for your marketing. Um, my business partner, co-founder of uh, J Street with me, Jim Wolf, um, he's a veteran business consultant. Um, you know, the, um, a lot of the big name consulting firms are in his background, and he's um, the professor of entrepreneurship over at George Mason University. One of Jim's favorite mottos is begin at the end, and, and that's what we always do. You know, what are we trying to do here? What are your business objectives? What are you trying to achieve a year from now after you've run this marketing program or, or used this logo or done whatever you're doing from a marketing standpoint? What's going to constitute a win? And, and not just you know, fluffy answers to that, like, oh, we want more sales or we want higher awareness, but Jim actually works with clients to pull out the spreadsheets and say, specifically on a quantitative basis, how do you want this marketing to affect your bottom line? I mean, what is the real hard-nosed, clear business objective that you're striving for, um, and that's kind of our approach to marketing. I think it's a, many people's approach to marketing. It's not pretty pictures. It's not 
just designs, but it's actually a strategic tool that is meant to achieve clearly stated business objectives. And it can be a very powerful tool when it's used right. So, you know, whatever you're looking to do in your marketing communications, if it's done in the context of really understanding um, what you're trying to achieve from a business standpoint, we think it's going to be more effective and it'll certainly be more efficient from uh, from your the amount of money that you're going to spend and the resources you're going to put into it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because in a lot of different project types, there's a front end that's done. And interestingly enough, it's that same idea for some reason is not applied or at least thought about as an umbrella to in a business. An example would be creating an enterprise level website. <laughs> before any colors are chosen, before any design is undertaken, there's a, a, a information architecture that needs to be developed, an outline of a website. And the theory behind it, and it can't quite quantitate this to actually doing the strategy up front for numbers, but the time you spent up front doing this outline for a website can save you three to four times the amount of time down the road because you've worked out all the details and all the information you need to nail before you even get to that step. Yeah, I wish I wish there was a formula. There's a there's a probably a similar formula for oh, let's call it a corporate brochure. You're doing a yeah. eight page brochure that's going to define a new product line or a new business. Um, you know, there's so many times we see strategy by brochure where people get right into the writing and right into the development of a creative piece, but they haven't taken the time to think through the whole process, to think through exactly what they want to say. Um, you know, what's the key differentiator? Why? What? What makes us better than our competitors? Um, what we want our our targets to do when they read this brochure. I mean, if you do all of that, you know, in discussion, in facilitated sessions, and capture it all in a Word document, I'll tell you right now, you're going to save X percent time and money developing your brochure because all the thinking is done, and all the thinking has been approved and vetted with management before you bring in the creative team. And sometimes that takes, you know, two weeks, sometimes that takes two months, sometimes that takes longer depending upon a lot of the questions that need to be asked. I mean, have you spoken with your customers? Do you understand what they really need and does your the, the product or service that you want to market fit with what they're looking for? Have you done the competitive review to understand that what your competitors are saying or doing and making sure that what you're doing uh, fits with them and competes with them effectively? And have you done the internal homework, talking with the stakeholders to understand where leadership wants to take the company or where the brand management team wants to take the product? It, 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 all of that being done up front translates into efficiency, translates into saving people time and money, and translates into a more effective marketing down the road. Yeah. Uh, now that you've hit on those, uh, which is, you know, I think we, we beat the horse on importance of strategy, but it is so important, I, I think it needs to be repeated multiple times over and over and over again. But uh, let's get into a couple of the nuts and bolts about this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, about, about doing the homework uh, and just hit on the key points of those. And I know one of them you mentioned was, uh, you know, clarifying your message, uh, defining your target audience, also, uh, your goals and how you kind of tie all those into objectives. So, what kind of things can you uh, impart to us about helping businesses when they're starting off clarify their message? Well, let me let me um, I'll give a, a a little case study story. I'm not going to mention any names, but um, a particular client um, came to us and they wanted to go run a, a newspaper ad. And I think the circulation of the newspaper ad was going to reach, I don't know. 500, 600,000 people or something along those lines. And that was great. We could certainly go ahead and develop this newspaper ad, but we sat, we went back to the beginning and said, well, what are we trying to achieve? And, well, we're trying to achieve X percent revenue growth for next year. Okay, well, how many customers do you need to get to achieve that revenue growth? And the number was, I don't know, 1,000 customers, something along those lines. And out of those 1,000 customers, how many do you currently have relationships with? And you keep doing the math, and at the end of the day, the answer was there were about 500 people, names and addresses, people that they needed to reach with their marketing. And they knew exactly who these people were. 
and they had a fairly good idea of what they were looking for. And in that context, it made for a much more efficient effort, meaning instead of running a newspaper ad to the masses, you run a very targeted marketing outreach campaign to the 500 individuals who you know you're going after, and that all comes out of what you're trying to achieve. So thinking through it almost surgically and methodically to figure out who your target group really is and what makes them tick is one way to dive into this. I mean, what are you trying to sell to whom, and what can you say to that group to get them to buy it? Um, but so many times people come in and say, well, let's just scream it to the world, when the fact of the matter is after you think through it and do a little of this kind of homework, you realize that you've got a much smaller audience, and that has significant implications for how you spend your marketing resources. Yeah, why you know, the uh, concrete numbers are really important when you're defining those things. Uh, I've had clients multiple times where we just like to tell them, uh, you stop making assumptions, especially when it comes to marketing and advertising, because there's radio, TV, newspaper, etc. And we have clients all the time who go, okay, we need to grow our business. I mean, that is the, the purpose. Everyone's trying to increase their business and make money. And first things they do is go, oh, we're going to a trade show, so we need a brochure. And everyone thinks that because that's what everyone has there. Or, oh, we need to do print advertising, or we need to do TV. They make an assumption that they need to do this because that's what people do, as opposed to crunching down the numbers and saying, what's the goal, what do we need to achieve? Based on that, what's the best for accomplishing well, that's right, and you know the, the answer to I'm going to a trade show, I need a brochure, well, if you think through the strategy up front, the short answer is I'm going to a trade show, and maybe instead of a brochure, I need to have 10 outstanding meetings with key prospects. And it's those meetings that you really need to accomplish at that trade show, not handing out brochures to all the people on the floor. So that changes what you might want to do from a marketing standpoint. And I, I hate the marketing word. I mean, it, it's outreach, it's communications. I'm not exactly sure what the right term is. When you say marketing, people automatically think brochures and advertising campaigns. But the fact of the matter is, if what you need to achieve at a trade show is make 10 big sales, then it's about getting the right PowerPoint presentation in place, making sure you have the right setting for those meetings, making sure you have the right leave-behinds, and so importantly, making sure that you have the pre-meeting and post-meeting follow-up program in place. So many times we'll have a great presentation and then there isn't the mechanism or the discipline in place to do the follow-up calls, to do the follow-up mailings, to see that one meeting as part of a, a program. Um, because we all know it takes multiple contacts with, with a target to, to move to the sale. So it's that type of thinking. It's, it's asking the question why to your point, you can't make the assumption we need a brochure. Well, the first thing we ask clients is, well, why do you need a brochure? Are you sure you need a brochure? Maybe you need a, a postcard, three by five, that sends people to a short website where you've got a one-minute video that explains what the product is. And maybe you're not going to spend the money on the printing press. Maybe you want to spend it in web development. I mean, why do you need that? Why do you need a brochure? Why do you need to advertise? Why do you need um, to go to that trade show? I mean, ask why, and if you challenge those assumptions, you might find that there's going to be smarter, more efficient answers. Yeah, ask why is a very, very powerful question. Yep. Yep, and that's, and that's the strategy. I mean, if you really need to, to step back and say, what does doing the strategy homework up front mean? It means asking yourself why. Why are we marketing? We've had clients come in and say, we want to do this big marketing program, spend six figures on you know, doing the full boat, the, you know, the print advertising, the radio, the, all of that. And we've gone through the strategic piece, and our answer at the other end was, don't do any marketing. You want to hire a new sales force. You need some internal operations. You need some different management changes. You know, it's the, really the intersection of the business consulting with the marketing that leads to what the right answer is. I mean, that's why I hate using the marketing term because, you know, to a certain extent, any way that you can reach a target, whether it's a customer or an investor or um, a partner company, any means of reaching them is marketing in the, you know, in the broadest sense. When I was at Leo 
Burnett, um, the folks in Heinz, the Heinz group, Heinz Ketchup, used to say that the bottle of ketchup on the refrigerator door was more important marketing than running the actual advertising. You open the door, there it is. I mean, it's any way you can get in front of a, a target with your message. And now with the Internet, I mean, there's, there are so many ways to reach people now. And the days of having, you know, uh, two seconds to get your uh, impression across, sometimes you're down to a nanosecond to just get a very quick idea about who you are and what you stand for out there on the branding front. So Let me ask, ask the question why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you see any particular stumble lean block, uh, blocks excuse me, that uh, your clients tend to face when they're trying to clarify their message or define their target audience? Because I know it's, it's one thing to to think what your target audience is versus what it actually is? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, think, um, I think our clients try to sell their product too much, and I'll be very specific about what that means. We often say, and I write it on the whiteboard many times when I'm facilitating strategy sessions, stop selling your product. Stop explaining why your product is great. Stop explaining what your product does. Ex obviously, sell the benefit, and we all know this, but not what the product does, but what it does for the target, what problems it solves, what challenges it overcomes, um, and not just the left brain stuff, but the right brain stuff. Like, oh, it gives you peace of mind, or it allows you to go home from work at 5 o'clock every day. Yeah, we wish that could happen, but, you know, <laughs> don't explain, especially in the technology world, the software world. Um, Brilliant engineers, brilliant technicians with products that really are just amazing. Your jaw drops when you see what some of these technology products can do. But you can't just go out and explain it. You have to um, really dive into what the benefits are. And there's a translation process. Um, you have to translate it into English. You have to translate it into language that all of your target groups are going to understand, from the technically minded folks to the um, executive management to, to Wall Street. So stop selling your products, sell the benefit, and make sure you're speaking in a language that your target um, understands. Well, let me ask you this. Sure. What information do you think would be helpful in, in a business defining their target? And I ask this because I know when we started off that it, there was an idea of the definition of the target and essentially, our kickoff was you know freelancing for the larger agencies before right. we gained our own client base. Um, and, but it wasn't until after the client base started building that it was easier to define. Now we know who we wanted to go after and how, but the end result of what it became were a little bit different. So when you're a new business and you have a product or a service and you haven't established that yet, uh, do you have any ideas that would help a business help define their target? You know, there's no clear-cut answer, obviously, and there's always the danger with the new business. It's not the danger. It's the uh, temptation to bark at every car that goes by <laughs> um, and let your business be defined by the opportunities that are out there. And, you know, while on paper and academically it makes much more sense to have a set plan in terms of what you want to do and how you want to grow the company, there has to be a certain amount of barking at every car that goes by because you need to get revenue and you need to build the business. But... To define the target and to define the messaging, there's really three different main considerations. Um, the first is internal. I mean, why are we here? What is this company all about? What is our mission? Um, is this a lifestyle company? Are we going to flip it down the road? Or are we looking to turn ourselves into a multi-billion dollar corporation? I mean, what, what are the founders there for? What are you really good at? And, and you know, the whole internal perspective. So when we dive into strategy, the first place we start is with the internal stakeholders. And we'll do a, you know, a full-day summit with the leadership and all the stakeholders to ask those questions. Why? What is this all about? What are you trying to do as a company? And what is the brand all about? Um, you know, everything from the specific, you know, exploration of the benefits that the products provide to, you know, all of the right brain imagery things. We actually have people cut pictures out of a magazine to show what the picture of the brand looks like and list the adjectives. And, you know, there's 
it's amazing when you sit down with an internal stakeholder group and have them do that together, how much clarity can come out of it, and sometimes how, how fundamental a shift in strategic direction can come out of one of those sessions. We had one client who um, had a technology product, and the, it was in the, um, uh, the protection arena, and their image that they had of themselves was, uh, was kind of a military image, like a sentry um, um, stationed at the door to protect the fortress. Uh, so there really was that level of security. It was a security company. And after we went through this exploration with them, we realized that it wasn't this military-type security that the company was all about. It was a much softer type of security. It wasn't a soldier. It was more like, you know, mom on a winter day with a nice bowl of soup. You know, it was one of those things. And when you think about that, in terms of defining what your new company is all about, are you are you best represented by a soldier at the door or best represented by a, the warmth of a fireplace on a cold winter day? Same product, same message, security, but the imagery and the branding and how you present yourself in the marketplace fundamentally different. It can be the exact same product, but it's presented in two different ways. So that type of internal exploration happens. The second piece is obviously talking with the targets. A lot of one big mistake companies make is not talking to the targets. We've got the world's best mouse trap, it's going to sell itself. It ain't the case. You've got to spend time, whether it's formal research with a marketing research company or just mother in law research where you get a bunch of friends together and buy a lunch and ask them about the product and the, the service that you're selling. Um, it really almost doesn't matter what the folks internally think when you put in the context of what their perspective targets are looking for. So you have to kind of assess the internal stakeholders. You have to assess the targets and what they're looking for and really understand their needs, what makes them tick, their mindset, what their lives are like, what kind of cars they drive, you know, what kind of magazines they read. Just get a real understanding of who your target is. We often write up target profile statements so you can get a mental picture of who those folks are, and Michael, you know from the creative standpoint, having a mental picture of who the target is, it really it, it helps strengthen the creative effort. And then the final piece, not to prolong this, is the competitive piece. Once you know what you want to do internally, once you know what your targets are looking for, you've got to look at the whole competitive landscape. There could be four other companies that are doing exactly what you want to do. There could be a nice open area in the marketplace that you can go and, and occupy. Um, but you have to know what that landscape looks like before you really develop the marketing effort. So a little bit long-winded, but if you think of those three specific areas, the company, the target customers, and the competitors, and you really examine each of those three areas, I think that's the definition of the homework that needs to be done in advance of your creative assignment. You know, I'd like to go back and <clears throat> underline two things you mentioned. Number one was uh, in the messaging. And that is creating the imagery. You talked about a soldier at the door versus, you know, the warmth of a fireplace or our mom in the kitchen with soup. And that is a very, very strong element that a lot of people really tend to overlook. They sit down and they put words on paper, but they don't actually create a visual image in their head or actually, you know, clipped out on board to actually help define what their message is. Because that imagery is really strong in helping all the other pieces play out to help it kind of keep in mind of, you know, a single picture that defines everything. You know, the picture is worth a thousand words. I hate saying that, but that's so true with the imagery part of that. And the other thing I'd like to underline is your mother-in-law fo focus groups, which is, is a fantastic idea that's so simple about getting some really great feedback. Uh, when I was uh, at other companies, I know, you know, would sit down, art director, copywriter, you kind of sit in your little bowl, you create ideas, you think they're fantastic, and then we used to take them out to the receptionist or other people outside the creative department and put it in front of them and say, you know, what do you think? And they just look at you sometimes quizzical and go, huh? And you're like, okay, you know, force from the trees type thing. You know, get some external input and it'll help you really kind of get back on track, especially when you're internal and everyone's on the same boat, but no one's seeing it from an outside perspective. I, I, put, a, I put a lot of value in focus groups. Um, 
I mean, I, I grew up at uh, Leo Burnett, and we used to do focus groups on, you know, Keebler salty snacks, watching people take different bites of chips or, or General Motors cars, and just sitting behind the glass and listening to people talk about the product, I think I often find that that process, that's where a lot of the ahas come from in the creative element. Um, and back to the imagery piece, um, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think the imagery is the tiebreaker. I mean, you have to assume that there are three other products that are just as good as yours are out there. And there's three other companies that can give you all the facts, that can give you all the rationalization, and explain to you up and down why their product is the one you should select. But at the end of the day, people are going to pick your product or service not only because of the attributes of it, but because they like you, you know, because they make a connection with you. Um, you know, why do people pick Ben and Jerry's ice cream over other ice cream? Well, you walk in there and there's this feeling of, God, it's, you know, it's, it's giving back to the community. We've got social consciousness, a little Grateful Dead. I, I like walking into Ben and Jerry's. Is the ice cream better than haagen or better than, um, um, you know, Baskin Robbins? I don't know. But I feel like Ben and Jerry's is a brand that I fit with. And that element, that right brain element of not only is the product fit my needs, but I like these folks, I trust these folks, I kind of want to hang out with these folks. Um, oftentimes, clients just disregard that. And I'll turn the table around and say, that may be, in many cases, the reason why people pick you. Because, you know, you, it, it comes down to building a relationship and especially with a service company. So, you know, that that's a tiebreaker, and that's something that should be considered in the mix of all of your thinking through. Figure out the right brain elements as well as the left brain elements. You know, uh, one last thing I'd like to like cover is, you know, we've talked about strategy, and when you get this information down about defining your message and your, and your target and your imagery, and you've received the feedback, uh, from you know your mom, a formal focus group. You, you've done all the ask whys. You, you've tied in all your messaging into your objectives. It now comes down to actually start getting to more of a you know I guess depending on your perspective the fun part of okay now that we have this now we have to define our, our business name. You know we have to create a logo and then hopefully they're creating some sort of slogan or tagline that helps wrap this all up into a nice little package. And if you could just give me some, some input on, on that part of it, the name, the logo, the slogan, because I know people think, oh, we have all this information, and um, oh, I, I got an idea for a logo, I'm going to go spend 50 bucks and knock this thing out. And then they just think, oh, I've got it, and they just kind of keep going, and they tend to glean over it a little too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, once you go through the strategy piece, and you document it, and you get agreement and consensus to it, and then you stick with it, it becomes very easy because there's a right answer. And um, I'll give you a scenario, and it's very common in, let's say, the technology arena. Um, for a piece of technology, it can go down the innovation road. This is the most innovative piece of technology that there is, you know, whatever, whatever it is. It's most innovative. Or you can go down to the um, customer service end. We're going to give you the best service. It's going to make your life easier same piece of technology, but you take a right turn and go innovative in terms of the way you position yourself, or you can take a left turn and go customer service. Those two different roads point to right and wrong decisions on, you name it, on the name. You know, there are names that sound more innovative and uh, names that are a little softer and sound more friendly. There are typefaces that are stronger and more innovative and uh, warmer. There are colors there's imagery, there's, it, it, it begins to form the way you want to develop your name and your tagline and your logo based on the strategy. And the strategy, of course, comes from what your customers want and all the stuff that we just talked about. But you have to choose one path that's right for you to focus on, put that up on the wall, and then evaluate everything against that. So it, does your name sound innovative and 
technological and people hear the name, they say, wow, that's really you know, 22nd century and makes me think of high technology, or does that name make you think that you're going to get taken care of? Um, use it as the litmus test to define, to make the decisions on everything in your marketing mix, from the name to the logo to the advertising to the people that you hire to the way you answer the phone to where you hold your company meetings. I mean, it becomes the brand. I mean, the branding word is, is you know, there's so many different definitions of, of it, and there's so many companies that do a great job with branding, whether it's the strategic piece or the design piece, but it's the companies taking that branding and um, kind of internalizing it and making it part of their um, DNA. Uh, with that kind of focus, I think you're going to be better off. Uh, it's certainly going to give a little more clarity and certainly going to help you make decisions. And that's what strategy does. It gives you a compass and a set of uh, parameters to help you make decisions. And when you know what the right answer is, it gets so much easier. Because you don't, it's not, it's not subjective. We all know one of the hardest things to do in, <laughs> is to do a logo <laughs> because it's so subjective. I like red, I like blue, I like green. Everyone has their own opinions and there's no right or wrong, but if you do the strategy piece up front and define what the right answer is, um, it just helps. And it saves time, money, and results in more effective um, communications. And, yeah, and it's funny, when it comes to like logos and you know imagery, it, you have a lot of people who will be lean toward, I like red. I like red, right. They tend to forget, and I'm just ambiguous color choice there, but they tend to forget it's, it's not about what you think. It's about what your targets think. Because your targets, right. based on who you're going after, may hate red. So you have yeah. to put your own inclinations aside and stick with that strategy, regardless if it goes against, you know, and gnaws at you and it's nails on chalkboard. If it's right for the target, that's who you really need to sti stick with. And yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, you know, your targets like red and your competitors, everyone's using red or no one's using red, all that needs to be considered. Um, and, and at J Street, that's what, I mean, that's what we do, Michael. You know that we've, we've worked together for and been, been working together for quite some time. I mean, it's thinking through these issues. It's making sure that companies from Fortune 500 down to early stage um, startups think through this work up front. And it could be, you know, it, sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's two years, you know, it really depends on how big the task is, but doing the homework makes all the difference, um, and it gets, um, it's our approach, um, and certainly what we recommend to clients and to our partner companies that we work with. Yeah. Well, hey, Jay, I really appreciate your time on the phone today. I know you're trying to pack up the family to go to Europe for a couple of weeks. Good luck with that one. Yes, it's going to be quite an adventure with three young boys, and we're going over for a family wedding, and it's going to be an adventure. So I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> but no, but I do appreciate the time as well and the chance to talk about this because, um, you know, it's what we do, and um, it's always good to uh, have the forum to discuss it. Yeah. Well, again, uh, Jay Kerness, uh, president of J Street Consulting. That's letter J. S T R E E T Consulting, and it's jstreetconsulting.com out of Washington, D.C. And uh, again, hey, really appreciate the call, and I'm sure we'll be talking more later with all the other stuff we've got going on right now. Um, but again, hey, thanks for everyone for downloading and listening. I uh, appreciate taking time out of your day. Hopefully, you've got some good information out of this. I know every time I talk to Jay, uh, we tend to impart some excellent information that stick into our bag of tricks and to apply to other projects we're always working on. And uh, we've got more in the series coming up. We're going to be covering all sorts of things from you. We're going to be doing a lot of basic stuff, everything from domain registration, uh, your business location, logo design, marketing materials, and onward. So we'll be looking forward uh, to sending you some more information. So we'll be looking through your e box, email box for when that's coming down. Again, thanks a lot, Jay. Have a great trip, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you very much, Michael. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it.